Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain and authorities are again asking people to act responsibly given that there have been various outbreaks of COVID-19 around the country in recent days. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your names here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, various outbreaks of COVID-19 around the country mean that governments are again having to warn people that we need to be responsible. As we can see here, Spain's autonomous communities call for responsibility with the end of the outdoor mask rule and new outbreaks. The autonomous communities have called for prudence and responsibility given the end of the use of masks outdoors and the outbreaks. The evolution of the Delta variant and several macro outbreaks associated with end of year trips are of concern, especially one linked to Mallorca, which has left hundreds of infected people in at least eight different communities. The use of masks in the street has ceased to be mandatory throughout Spain since Saturday, except when there are crowds and a minimum distance of 1.5 meters between other people can't be maintained. Many citizens, however, have chosen to continue to wear them. So prudence and responsibility again being called for here because of those macro outbreaks of COVID. 19 around the country due to those end of year student parties. And again, it seems for the umpteenth time that these outbreaks are due to the irresponsibility of the same group of people, students. And a lot of people here are now asking the question, are we going to repeat the mistakes of last summer? As we can see here, macro outbreaks and the danger of forgetting when there is risk outdoors. We may repeat the mistakes of last summer. The coronavirus macro outbreak that originated in an end of year trip to Mallorca has left more than 600 positive cases among students from seven communities and more than 2,000 young people in quarantine. With the vacation season just started and the latent optimism for the relaxation of the mask rule, the news comes as a bit of a shock. Is this the prelude to another summer of outbreaks? It could be very good for us precisely so that we don't start thinking that it's over, because it's not over. I think it is a warning. We still have the virus for a while, said Alberto Torres, head of preventative medicine at the Virgin de la Arishaka Hospital in Murcia, emphasizing that we should not forget when there is danger of contagion also outdoors. So the news of these outbreaks coming as a bit of a shock. And as that one expert said there, this whole COVID-19 thing here in Spain is far from over. So are we going to repeat the mistakes of last summer? More than likely. Now, one of the kids who was in Mallorca at these end of school year parties has spoken to the press. And as we can see here, Ander, one of the teenagers who went to Mallorca, said, we have had a very hard year and it got out of hand. The number of students infected with coronavirus after celebrating the end of the school year in Mallorca continues to increase and the outbreak has already reached 10 autonomous communities. While the authorities are looking for those responsible and working to stop the contagions, Ander, one of the young people who traveled and now has symptoms, tells us about his experience and acknowledges his share of responsibility. When asked why he thought these situations occurred, he said we are all responsible, from those in charge of the party to us. It is true that we knew that the virus was there, but we had had a very hard year and it got a little out of hand. We also knew what we were going for. We knew it could happen. So the situation got a little out of hand, according to that young man but at least he admits they are responsible for the outbreaks. Now some good news for cruise ship lovers and it is that the first cruise ship since the pandemic began yesterday docked in Barcelona. As we can see here, first cruise ship since the beginning of the pandemic arrives in Barcelona with 2,500 passengers. Barcelona yesterday welcomed the first tourist cruise since the beginning of the COVID pandemic which docked at the port of Barcelona around 6am and was there until 3pm with about 2,500 passengers on board, about 50% of its capacity. This is the MSC Grandiosa, which expects to sail with about 500 more passengers from the city, but without exceeding the limit of 70% of the ship's capacity due to the measures for the coronavirus, explained the director of MSC Cruises in Spain, Fernando Pacheco, at a press conference in Barcelona. Pacheco has assured that the company follows a protocol to guarantee the safety and health conditions of customers in the face of COVID, which begins with an obligatory antigen test before starting the route and which must be negative in order to be able to board. So some 2,500 passengers on that ship 
and given all of the problems that cruise ships had last year when the pandemic first began, they must be very, very brave. Now, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is lobbying for a mandatory quarantine period for people from the UK that want to visit Europe this summer. But Spain, it seems, is not in favour of this. As we can see here, Spain rejects Merkel's bid to impose EU-wide quarantine for UK visitors. Spain has firmly rejected Angela Merkel's attempt to secure an EU-wide quarantine policy for British tourists as UK holiday makers rush to book flights to new green list destinations, including the Spanish islands of Mallorca and Ibiza. The German Chancellor fears that the Delta variant, which is dominant in the UK, could be spread across Europe by British tourists, especially now that Boris Johnson's government is starting to allow UK citizens to travel again. But Spain has insisted that each EU country makes its own sovereign decision about who to admit, as is their legal right, and is desperate to see tourism reopen. The country's income from tourists collapsed by almost 80% last year to less than 20 billion euros. So Ms Merkel, it seems for once, not getting her way here in Europe. And that's mainly because, as we saw, Spain is desperate to reopen tourism. Now, some more countries have become exempt from travel requirements to visit Spain this summer, and one of them is the United States. As we can see from this headline, Spain adds US to countries exempt from travel restrictions. The government has included the United States in the list of countries whose residents are exempt from restrictions on travel to Spain, according to the official State Gazette published on Thursday. Under this order of the Ministry of the Interior, other countries such as Albania, Lebanon, Republic of North Macedonia, Serbia and Taiwan are also exempted from these limitations due to the COVID-19 health crisis. So there we go, people from those countries can now travel to Spain a lot more easily, no need for a negative PCR test, no need to show that you were vaccinated, you only have to go to a government website and fill in a form. So some good news there for you. US travellers planning a trip to Spain. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days is now down to 95. The daily amount of cases per day is down 25% on previous data. There are still 2,366 people hospitalised with COVID around the country and there are 641 COVID patients still in ICU. When it comes to vaccinations, we can see that 33.50% of the population have completed vaccination and 51.27% have received at least one dose. Now, Spain's demographics have changed as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and for the first time in 10 years, Madrid, the capital, has lost population. As we can see here, Madrid loses population to other regions for the first time in 10 years. Why go back if I can telework from my village, one person said. The movement of a certain part of the population from large cities to less densely populated areas has been one of the collateral effects of the pandemic. Madrid is the clearest example. Last year, the region recorded more outflows to other parts of Spain than inflows from other parts of the country. Its internal migratory balance is negative, with 20,836 fewer people according to the latest population statistics from the INE. This is the first time since 2010 that this has happened to Madrid. The possibility that some have been able to stop living close to work because their jobs are at home would explain much of this exodus from Madrid over the past year. So there we go, Madrid's population smaller for the first time in 10 years, as some people realising that a big city like Madrid is probably not the best place to be in the middle of a pandemic. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Steve. Hi Stuart, thanks for your time spent putting together the headlines from the Spanish newspapers. The UK has already said that the Balearics are on their watch list, therefore giving Brits fair warning that if things go the wrong way with the virus, Mallorca for instance could be taken off the green list at fairly short notice. My guess is that most families won't go away if there's a good chance of having to cut their holiday short to avoid the quarantine regulations. So it looks like another disappointing year for the tourist businesses and tourists alike. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment, and I imagine that that is the case, that the UK has put the Balearic Islands on the watch list, given the Mallorcan COVID-19 slip-up the other day. We saw it a couple of weeks ago with Portugal. They were on the green list, and they were taken off the green list, and a lot of British people had to cut their holidays short. And if you are planning a two-week holiday to a place like the Balearic Islands, and there's a risk that that holiday could be cut short, then maybe you'd start to look for a less risky holiday destination. So we'll see what happens with these new outbreaks, and whether the health situation here in Spain does worsen and we'll see if the Balearic Islands can manage to keep itself on the green list. One here from Kyle. Stuart, have you seen the new travel restrictions for visitors coming from the US to Spain? No vaccine or even negative PCR test requirements to enter. 
I'm surprised you didn't cover this. That is huge news for people from the US looking to come to Spain this summer. Just wanted to bring this to your attention. Yeah, Kyle, thanks for the comment and thanks for bringing it to my attention. As you saw earlier, I did include this in the news update today, but it wasn't something that made the headlines here in Spain. In fact, I only saw it published in one newspaper and that was the one that I used. And you're right, I imagine this is huge news for people in the United States that were looking to holiday in Spain this year. And the US now joins the list of around 15 countries that no longer need these requirements. One here from James Stewart. I have met people in the past in Spain who bought a place in a rural area and have gotten old and cannot now sell them. My advice is do not buy in rural Spain. I have noticed also that the places that sell really fast are those on the front with a sea view and plenty of places to eat and drink nearby. They are generally more expensive, of course. Yeah, James, thanks for the comment. And I imagine that that is always going to be a problem for people that buy property in more rural parts of this country trying to sell it later, especially given the trend in recent times that people are moving from these places to larger towns and cities. And I imagine that one of the reasons that people abandon these places in the first place is because there is a lack of services. But if you don't have a problem with that, you can find yourself a bargain in some of these areas. And you're right, the coastal areas are always going to be the most popular places for foreign residents to buy property here in Spain. People looking for a sea view and plenty of nice bars and restaurants to keep them satisfied. But as the old saying goes, horses for courses, and I'm sure that there's always going to be a lot of people looking to buy bargains in rural Spain. One here from Michael Stewart. The Canaries were not added to the UK's green list. The probable reason is a spike in COVID infections in Tenerife. The ironic thing is I'm told the centre of the new outbreaks is in the island capital, Santa Cruz de Tenerife, rather than the tourist areas in the south of the island. However, the consequences are increased restrictions, which mainly affect struggling businesses in those areas. Three of the Canary Islands are now officially COVID-free, La Palma, El Hierro and La Graciosa, and the vaccination plan is advancing rapidly throughout the archipelago. I understand Menorca is also COVID-free, but with the huge outbreak in Mallorca you mentioned, how long can the Balearics remain on the UK green list and the Canaries denied? Yeah, Michael, thanks for the comment. I'm sure that quite a few people were surprised by the UK's decision to include the Balearics on the list but not the Canary Islands. As you said, there are various COVID-free islands down there, but the problems are on the bigger islands of Tenerife and Las Palmas. And even though those tourist areas there in the south don't really have a problem, all of the Canary Islands have been kept off the list. And you have to feel sorry for the businesses struggling in those tourist areas. And when it comes to the Balearics and for how long they're gonna be able to stay on that green list, time will tell. One here from She Saves, He Invests, They Travel. Stu, your thumbnail and title today really speaks to us. We have just started the Camino de Santiago on bikes today. We rode from St. John Pied de Port to Pamplona, 43 miles with 720 miles to go. Yeah guys, thanks for the comment, referring to the thumbnail that I put up the other day of somebody walking the Camino de Santiago in the middle of nowhere there. And good to see that you have started yours, but you still have a long way to go, some 720 miles. As I said the other day, the Camino de this year is going to be a very, very popular thing for people to do. And I know at least 10 people here in Madrid who have said that that is their plan for the summer. So good luck with the Camino and enjoy your time in the north of Spain. And finally, one here from Janet. Your garden looks so calm and tranquil. I think I could sit there all day. It looks so lovely. Thank you for your informative video, Stuart. Yeah, Janet, thanks for the comment and glad you like the garden. And you're right, it is very calm and tranquil at the moment. But it's starting to get hot here in Madrid and that means that it is impossible to sit out here all day. In fact, at the moment, I can only sit out here in the morning and later in the day around 8 or 9 p.m. The rest of the day, it's a virtual no-go zone because of the heat, but it is a nice space and we're lucky to have it. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.